Institute of Natural History. You have more, more wine for me and some more wine for the chicken. My, my father was a high school teacher for 29 years, and so I remember, I can't tell you when, but I just remember growing up and saying, I wanted to be a teacher, I wanted to be a high school teacher. My father actually um, forbid it, he said, I don't want you to be a teacher. Teaching's going, teaching's going downhill, the students are getting worse and worse, now, you don't want to do that, I want you to, you know, I want you to go into something else. Alright, well thank you. Then I'd probably make... Oh, no, you can only get straight. Thank go straight. You as well. Or turn left. Yeah, we're going to turn left at the next left. Yes, what do you think of it? Wild, because they look normal. Like you can see out there.
here to your um, left if you want to look out the side window. A couple things I wanted to share about William James. Um, one of them is this, that uh, William James in 19 or 1875, William James taught one of the university's first courses in psychology. The relations between physiology and psychology. He joked that the first lecture in psychology that was ever heard was the first I ever gave. James also established the U.S. Experimental Psychology Laboratory, oversaw Harvard's first doctorate program in psychology, earned by G. Stanley Hall in 1878, and in 1890, James published a highly influential two-volume synthesis and summary of psychology called Principles of Psychology. The books were read in North America and Europe, gaining attention and praise from Sigmund Freud and Carl Jung in Vienna. Some other stuff I wanted to share with you is just this kind of interesting thing here. You ready? James did not look or talk or think like a professor. His restless energy and desire to explore, examine, and experiment stood in contrast to other contemporaries. His unorthodox methods were also exemplified in the infamous story of Gertrude Stein's final examination. After reading the questions, Stein wrote in her examination book, Dear Professor James, I am so sorry, but I really do not feel like an examination paper in or physiology or philosophy today. Sorry. Then she left the classroom. The next day she received the reply, Dear Miss Stein, I understand perfectly how you feel. I often feel like that myself. And then gave her the highest mark in the class. He was also a favorite by many students. He was one of the few professors at the time who permitted students to ask questions. More than that, they could stop him on campus or walk home to him on Irving Street, which is where we're headed, discussing or arguing statements they had made in class. At the end of the term, he would even ask students to write out criticisms of the course and make suggestions for improvement is thought to be the first college teacher in America to do so. So William James was not your traditional professor. He was someone who just really desired knowledge, wanted his students to desire knowledge, and was okay being questioned and working through the questions in real time. American philosopher, because remember psychology didn't exist, so he started out in philosophy. Philosopher and psychologist. He lived in this house from 1889 until 1910. Give you a little bit of information. It was built, the house was built in 1889 for William James. It was designed by William Ralph Emerson in conjunction with James, who lived here with his family from 1889 until his death in 1910. So this was his house. Um, William James lived in Cambridge for more than 50 years, but this home on Irving Street was the most special Letters to friends and family are full of praise for the house, especially the Grand Library Study, which is 22 feet wide, 27 feet long, with floor-to-ceiling bookcases that have been preserved along with the principal rooms of the first and second floor through recent renovations. So he was a studier. He read books. I mean, think about how big that, that library's got to be. So 103 Irving Street, just like the James home, this is called the Jose or, or Joseph Josiah Josiah Royce House. Um, the Royce House was built in 1889. For nearly 30 years, Josiah Royce and William James were colleagues in the same department of philosophy at Harvard. During most of that time, they lived as neighbors. Where, on returning from class, they often entered into lengthy and sometimes heated philosophical discussions. Royce and James had always disagreed deeply concerning the proper understanding of religious phenomenon in their human life. It says their friendly long-standing dispute was known as the battle for the absolute. Note, just a note, you ready? Um, the property was later the home to Julia Childs and her taped cooking shows which were actually filmed in here. Child sold the house and spent her last years in California, but in 2001, the kitchen in its entirety was removed 
and sent to the Smithsonian's to Sm the Smithsonian um, National Museum of American History, which, when we're in D.C., you can visit. You are going to speak like Julia Child? No, I will not. <laughs> I can't remember what she sounds like. This is 107 Irving Street. It's the Eliza, Eliza Gibbons house. As the story goes, Henry Sr. returned home from a Boston Radical Club meeting one night in 1876 to announce that he had caught a glimpse of a woman who was to be William's wife, a Boston school teacher. Her name was Alice Poe Gibbons. In 1849 to 1822 she lived, so she outlived um, William James by about 12 years. And this was the home of her widowed mother, Eliza Gibbons. William's wife, Alice um, Howe Gibbons, James, is much attributed with creating emotional stability within the James family, not only for William, but also for his brother, Henry. And just to give you a little bit information about Henry, let me find my way here. Mm -mm -mm. I was trying to look here. I did not see... I thought there was a story in here about Henry, but I do not see it real quickly. If I find it, I will share it with you later. Does this sound good? Mm -hmm. I believe that Henry was William's father. Alright, so let's head on down here. Sciences is what you see behind you. During the American Revolution, charter members included John Adams and John Hancock, and they founded the American Academy of Arts and Sciences to provide a forum for scholars and all those working on behalf of democratic interests of the Republic. During the 19th century, the elected membership included Daniel Webster, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, Louis Agassi, Ralph uh, Waldo Emerson, Alexander Graham Bell, and William James, who was inducted in 1875. 1875 was a hot year for William James, obviously. A first lecture in psychology, founding of the lab in psych, and then, of course, you know, being inducted here into the American Academy of Arts and Sciences. James' eldest son, Henry, a writer, was inducted in 1931 and followed the next year by another son, William, who was, also, who was a painter. So again, they kept it in the family, so to speak, a family tradition, if you will. Yeah. 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 